Okay, welcome to the Guitar Show, and also, what's your channel? The James Oliver Guitar Channel. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be putting this on both channels, and so I'm gonna do my introduction first. James, this is James Oliver, who is a um, he's quite the fella, and he's a he's a red hot guitar picker. Okay, that's the oh. biggest accolade I can give anybody. A red hot guitar picker. Okay, you can introduce me if if you want to. I mean, I don't know. If you can introduce me, uh, there's not much to say about me, but... Well, this is Ramon Goose <laughs> from The Guitar Show. A fine musician and a fine man. Oh, that's very kind of you. Very kind. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said about me, you know? Um, okay, so uh, we're, we're, today, guys, we're going to be talking about Telecasters. It's all about the Telecasters, not about us. It's all about the Telecaster and uh, just everything, really. And we're going to free flow and we're just going to... So at the moment, I've got in my hands one of my favorite guitars. It's a green, beautiful green color. And this is really a 60s Tele with the Honduras Rosewood neck. Um, and it's, you know, uh, still... It's got uh, actually a Callaham, Callaham... No, Glendale. Glendale Steel Cold... No, Stainless Steel Bridge and Stainless Saddles. And... This is, I'm really, really kind of liking the 60s thing. And I know a lot of people change these saddles to brass. What's your opinion on that? Well, to be honest with you, I don't know. I, I'm the sort of person, if, if yeah. I like it, I just sort of leave it as it is. I never, obviously, yeah. I've changed the pickups on this guitar, which is my main gigging guitar. But okay. I never change bridges or anything, really. Well, because for me, like the 60s sound of a telly, I really... You know, that kind of Michael Bloomsfield sort of uh, blues sound. But, you know, especially in the middle position. You get that, really? And then you got a lot of chime. You got a lot of chime on the, on the on the back pickup, so that's what I really like about the '60s. Um, but I guess the Blackguard, you know, is is the the starting point. But w w tell us about your guitar, James. Well, this is a, it started life as a as a Fender Mexican Vintera Telecaster. You know, I'm quite lucky that I've got quite a few vintage guitars. I've got a real '63 Tele and and some custom shop Teles, etc. But I'm yeah. a big fan of a guitar player called Mick Green who played in a band called the Pirates. Right, sort of like, like sort of a a punk rock and roll band, so to speak. That's so what I first. Me... Can I just say, sorry to butt in here, James. When I first, because guys, I, I first caught sight of this young fellow on um, social media, and what I really liked about you is is you kind of mix a bit of punk in with this kind of rockabilly. And is, does that oh. come from Mick? Is that a Mick Green yeah. thing? Basically, yeah. I, I just got. To, I like playing fast. I don't know why. Mm. I just like playing fast, and, and I like playing. I like playing. I like playing songs fast. I like. Just, I like playing fast. And Mick always used a telecaster. Are you taking any drugs or anything, James? No, I'm. T I'm. I'm teetotal. Right. I am completely teetotal. Just hyperactive. But maybe, but Mick played the Telecaster Custom, which is what this is. And for right. many years, I played a Fiesta Red '61 Strat. So Fiesta Red is my favorite color. Yeah, yeah, um, red, the Hank Marvin sort of. Thing, yeah, Nofla sort of, even yeah. though he's not Fiesta, he's close enough, isn't it? So I walked into a guitar shop and I seen the Fiesta Red Telecaster Custom. So to me, it was Mick Green and it was yeah. red like the Strat. So, so so show us this guitar. It's really interesting. What is it? This is a, is this a Mexican? It's, kind of like, it's a Fender Vintera series, but I've modded it a bit. So what is this based on? Is it a based, was there ever a model like this in the... Yeah, it's, it's based on, it's based on a 70s Telecaster Custom. They started making right. the Customs in 72. Right, so this is kind of like the, the the Keith Richards, you know. Remember, he had that black one. Correct, but but yeah. but to me, it's always been Mick Green. But there, Mick there's Green, a clip yeah. of Keith, and he, yeah, and they, I, I can't remember what song they play, but he's battering something over the head, everyone. So they they are really good weapons. And so, um, so 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 why did you gravitate towards this guitar, and you got these vintage tellies? Why play this well, one? Well, I used to do pre-COVID about two hundred and fifty gigs a year, sometimes. You know, I used to hit 270, and you do and, more you know, gigs than you do more gigs than Sting. You you do realize that, don't you? I didn't know Sting did any gigs anymore. Oh, he does. He gigs more than anybody, but well, not ever. No, when it, before COVID, he was doing hundreds. He he's been gigging yeah, for the last that. since the 80s. 
he's gigs more than anyone. But it was sort of, it come to a point where I couldn't really afford to replace the vintage stuff because it's just gone so expensive to even what I paid for it when I bought them. So I just wanted a road guitar. Right. And, and just because talking about neck, what do you like in neck profile? I mean, this is my ideal. Well, this is a 7.5. And so, it's so not really here, skinny. Fitness. And oh. I don't like the flat radius. I, 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 I like a bit of a curve on it, you know. Is that 12? 12 inch radius, 10 inch? No, 7.5. This is as well. This is 7.5. Yeah. You know, the thing about a 7.5 radius, so 2.5 or whatever, is you have to really have a great setup because otherwise, what you find is it chokes. Okay. You know, with a 10 inch, 10 inch radius, a guitar, you know, it can bend easier. But on, on, on a 7.5 radius, because of the curve, when you bend up, sometimes. Can I. Play yours. Bend, bend the string, James. So did you, you, know, did you, you get that? It doesn't choke. Did you yeah. get that set up? Did you? Oh, it, it does it. So do you, do you but, set these up yourself, these guitars, or do you get somebody else? No, there's a guy called Dave Doonley. He's like the master luthier, you know, to me. And he does all my stuff. Where's but I've based? never had this guitar set up. Right, where's he based, this guy? Dave's based out of Cardiff, and he's a great Telecaster maker. He makes lovely right. acoustics, and he's a fine guitar player himself as well. Brilliant. So you're kind of you're you're, you're you were based a lot in Wales. Growing up, you were playing a lot in Wales, weren't you? Yeah. Around the scene in Wales. I mean, I didn't really know. I, I always knew there was a Cardiff Blues Festival, and I used to play in Barry a lot. You know, place called. Yeah, that, that was that was for Mike Duggan. Mike's a really yeah, good Mike, guy, yeah. a good supporter of the yeah. of, of 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 the music. You know. Yeah, so the, the, guys, if you're in America, um, Wales is a beautiful place. Lots of castles there, and um, the home Jeep. of uh, um, Richard Burton and uh, Tom Jones, right? You know Richard Burton, yeah, actor? of course. Uh, he's passed on, but uh, Tom Jones, Dylan and, Thomas, uh, who? Dylan Thomas. Yes, and uh, you know, so so it's it's a very historical place. It's beautiful. It's lots of green fields and hills, valleys. Ah. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> we won't talk about the sheep. I don't know why you brought that up, you know. So anyway, back to the telecaster. So I've got lots of different flavors of telly. So this is my 60s telly, and I really like this. And what I was saying to you, James, is I like to keep all of this steel because, you know, I know a lot of people change these to brass, which were, they were used in the 50s. But I think if you've got a 60s kind of telly style, it's nice to have steel saddles because then it sounds like a steel, sorry, sounds like a 60s guitar. And I just love that 60s telly sound, you know. It's very different from the, the, the Blackguard sound, you know. It is, I agree. You know. Um, so let's have a look. I just want to show you this other one that I've got. Because So what what what, what neck pickup have you got in there? Well, it should have a, um, a pattern. Of, sorry. It should have a, a Seth Lover wide range humbucker. That's what yeah. it's supposed to have. But the, 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 a company as called Lambertone has sent me a, a PAF. So I've got a PAF in the neck. And I've got a Joe Barden, Danny Gatton in the bridge. And I'd say that the Joe Barden, Danny Gatton's probably my all-time favourite for the Telecaster. I just think it's got that real, you know, that... You know, it's got that real twang to it. So, then, so I, I, what, can I have a look at the bridge pickup? Yeah, it's the Joe Barden... As you Joe Barden. So that's the double rails, isn't it? The Joe Barden. Yeah, and it's, and it's 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 what's in the Danny Gartens. And of course, then with this, you've got the Barden mixed with the PAF, which gives a like a. Because uh, uh, this is a this is an interesting thing. I don't tend to use the middle position that much. I'm not a massive fan of the middle. Sometimes I do, but I, especially with this guitar here, I either like it on the gold foil. Or on the, on the um, on the bridge. Bridge. So, um, you know, do do you tend to use the, the middle position more on a telly? Well, to be honest, with you, on a gig, I I tend to use the bridge all the time. You know, for that sort of like, <laughs> you can get all that. Yeah. But say, say I'm doing sort of a, like a, if I'm doing like a jump blues, yeah. you know, they're like. A, Mm. 
I do I do like the middle. And yeah. I probably use the neck pickup on a gig once. Really, we're kind of opposite. I mean, because uh, especially for so oh, sorry if I'm if I'm on if I'm playing like a jazz. I really like the you know the, the, having the neck pick up on the telly is amazing for playing jazz you know i, I thought they yeah. use it for like uh you know if i'm gonna do a you know like a a, 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 sort, of, a sort of a blues thing i mean mm. I mean, it is a nice sort of jazzy sound. I mean, I can't play jazz, but it's... yeah, I mean, if, I mean, uh, there's a lot of great guys like um, Tim Lurch. Is it Tim Lurch? He's sort of a big fan of his YouTube channel, and um, you know, just the way he, you know, he gets some beautiful sort of Ted Green um, and uh, Ed Bicknell. <laughs> This has got flat wounds on it, so this means it's almost okay. like, you know, it's got flat wounds, and I'm on the neck, a little bit rolled off on the uh, the tone, and it's really surprisingly the sort of jazz sound you can get out of it. And then you can flick down to here, and you've got the. <laughs> you know, you can get the more sort of chicken picking thing happening and that's what's the thing about telly you know with the middle sound yeah it's sort of nice for like you know when you do rolls like and all them open string things yeah yeah James can we, can we can we just see you a little bit can you bring the camera down just a tiny bit just so we can, yeah, and, and just show us what you were doing there. You can edit out that bit, can't you? No, I'm not going to edit. This is, in my oh, channel. Oh, you have edited, that was terrible. No, 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 in, in my channel, we, we keep it real. This oh, is one take, one take. all we my bad playing mistakes. No? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we keep it real, man. You know, so, real, I find, like, if we do a roll on, on, on the bridge. I quite like doing the rolls with the, in the middle there. Sort of... That's fantastic, yeah. So that's kind of almost a, a banjo. It's kind of like a banjo yeah, sort of but style. For some reason, I prefer in the middle to the. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, no, of... it works. It works in that context. It, it really does. This sound, though, this. Yeah. You know, I like the cutting sound of it. You know, it's nice. I mean, th this is kind of weird because this has got the gold foil, and 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 so the the individual the the in, sorry in the in between sound. I mean, it's a pretty lush. It's lovely. I mean, I should really. Kind of, it kind of works, yeah. It's, it's just that I kind of, I guess, for my style, maybe more for the African sort of stuff I do, I, I, I'd use it with world music stuff, but not really for, because I'm either doing the jazz thing, the jazz blues sort of, or. You know, that kind of vibe, yeah. Yeah. So let, let's talk about strings and 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 uh, action because this might be useful for people. Yeah. Um, so what about action? What are you having? What, what is your action? As long as it'll go without choking out. That's the same as me. That is the same as um, me. But you can still play slide with this low action. I find. Right. Um, 
10 to 46. 10 to 46, right. You know. That was kind of like a Rory, I think Rory Gallagher had pretty, um, pretty low action on and, and small strings on his Telecaster that he used for slide, you know. But yeah. for me, I'm, I'm the same. I have like, with my slide guitar, I have 12s and high action. Higher action. I know you have. Well, I have on, on my Cuda Caster. I yeah. got twelve flat ones. High action. Yeah, but, but on, on this, doing... this is the trick because you know I play some people's guitars and they have high action. I don't. I have as low action as I possibly can, but I have elevens. You know, I I, I play elevens, oh. but I keep the action low. That's really the trick for me to play the bigger strings is having. I just got this thing. Of... Why, you know. why, why work harder than you have to? Um, I literally, with my hands, they're quite fat. I don't know if you can see this. Kind of, I've got fat hands. You know, chunky fingers, you know? i got a fat body and thin hands, I have. <laughs> you got, th you got thin fingers. Got I thin have, fingers, but i got yeah. fat body. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, um, so, that, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just, you know, who cares? Who cares? what? Yeah. The, it's whatever works, you know, but... Exactly, yeah. I mean... But... So this is another question. Um, Go on. This is another question. Right, okay. Legato, staccato. We were talking about this the other day, weren't we? Legato yeah. and staccato. So w one thing with me is w when I was when I was learning guitar, um, my whole thing was like playing scales, and and I never knew, really knew why, but I was into Aldo Miolo and all those kind of guys. And I, I wanted to learn theory because my, my brother, my twin brother, identical twin brother, is an amazing jazz bass player. So I wanted to kind of play with him jazz, you know, and so I learned yeah, the I modes, know. you know, I learned the modes and all that stuff. Uh, but th in doing that, I kind of worked out. You know, that, that, that I do alternate picking. So I basically play, pluck a note. And I know there's other clever guitarists which they do all the economy picking. I don't do that either. I just play every note. So, so are you the same as me? Are you kind of? Are yeah, you picking I mean, every note? Is that how you do it? I'm not going to attempt. I'm not going to attempt to do it now because I haven't played yet today. Right. But yeah, this is another on, thing. Yeah, you have to warm up. You have to warm up. If you if you look on the, my channel, yeah, on all the fasty stuff I do, you know, yeah. I just pick every note. Funnily enough, I'm, I, I cheated a little bit. I did actually warm up before we did this. Well, I, to be honest, I've just okay. got it. I know. I, well, that, when I first contacted you, you were still in bed, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> Are you lazy? So that's that's Damn, a difference. You're so lazy. Um, right. Another thing. So so that, that that's really interesting. Is is that you know um, picking every note and and is there anything you do to practice to warm up or do you just play licks and stuff to warm up? Do you play any? Scales well, I mean, or... sort of. Well, I just I, I just have a little noodle about you know like I might go. Oh, the sound is off. Uh, I don't know. Um... Can, can we see that? Can we see that, James? Can we see? Oh yeah, bit? sorry. Here we go. You know, I might do like a just practicing. You know, the major scale. Right. Oh, yeah, and okay. except right, you know, uh, I just I just play stuff like that. You know, like the, the I don't know if I would play now. This, but this, and and James, come come back, come back, James. I'm back. Come back. Um. Do you how do you hold the plectrum? Because w when I first started playing guitar, I try I held it like Hendrix. I think Hendrix holds it like that. I just and, hold it like that. I, I never never. And then it. I changed it to this. Oh, I just. I changed it. See, I changed it. Like I've never thought about such things. Well, you know that's I I, I teach guitar, so I guess. Ah, I, I suppose. It, but, it, I, I just I just sort of hold it and I hybrid pick all the time. Yeah, and this is another thing: hybrid picking because you know people like Eric Johnson and Albert Lee do this to great effect, and so do you. But that's something that I always, I really like, sort of, um... Yeah. That is, it's, it's a really good thing to be able to, because you can kind of almost... Well, that's why I like it, Paul. You know, can you just demonstrate? Like, you know, can you like, demonstrate uh, something? Sort of all, uh, for, for, for that sort of thing, or as I did earlier, the, the, the roles, you know. Yeah, so that, that's but another thing, you know. 
And that works really well on the telly, doesn't it? Just just got the right spank for the. Um... I use a thumb pick sometimes. You use a thumb pick, really? Ah, yeah, these um, these are uh, Fred Kelly thumb picks. See, and they got like a little um. Yeah. Little you know little end on them. Let me show you my favourite ones. That's oh, that's interesting. I'll have to get one of those ones. Uh, I don't have any to hand. I have got. I have got another one, but I can't remember the name of it. Check this one out, James. Look, this one here is my favourite. These are amazing. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. These are. I think Ray uses these. Yeah. Well, Ray uses these. Yeah. Yeah. Now I find her out to do stuff like that with a thumb pick. Yeah. Because well, what I find with this one here though is because you know you know the old ones, these ones here. The Dunlop ones. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. Because the great thing about this, this is the great thing, guys, is this one here, you can actually hold it like a plectrum, so you can... Oh, yeah. you can... My, my, my mate, Paul Rosser, um, he, he, yeah. he gave me one of these, but I can't remember who, who makes them. See them? So they're like that. Sort of, oh, wait a minute. Let's have a look. That looks like a custom-made thing. Wow, they're that's expensive, incredible. They're expensive, yeah, I think. Yeah. My mate, Paul, gave it to me. And yeah. that's like a full-size plectrum, so you can hold it yeah. like a plectrum and play. But you can also play, you know, all, as you right. wish. Sort of and you've got like a snap-on, snap, like a, you know? Yeah, that's a, that's really cool. That's great. So let, let's, I mean, I, unfortunately, I can't play this telly today because the, what's happened is um, it's really reactionary to the, the temperature because the neck isn't sealed. It's just got gun oil on it, and okay. and for some reason the action's gone haywire. So I've got to lift the action up. It's it's literally unplayable. You know it happens. But this this thing is a monster. It's got it's got. I've kind of built this um, out of an MJT body, and um, the the neck was made in the Middle East, handmade with Brazilian board and uh, flame maple, and this has got diamonds. And so, what do you think? My question to you is, what do you think about diamonds and the telly? Because I I love them. Well, I've got the Telesonic, you got the which I can't get to at this point in time because it's piled up over there. But I think they're great because right. to me, my favourite sounding Gretsch is yeah. Cliff Gallop on, on the Gene Vincent records playing his yeah. Gretsch duo jet. Yeah. So to me, yeah. you get that because it's a, you know, you get that great Gretsch sound, yeah. but you can you can play a Telly. That's right, yeah. So, but I I'd like to show a Telly. Now. Okay, please, please do, James, please. Right. Now, Dave Dern, who I mentioned earlier, builds Telecasters, and this is Dave's Blackguard replica. He calls them Taft Delta, and this is the... Could, uh, could you could you go back and just have a look at that headstock? And yeah, don't it move says the, don't, Guitars Wales. Wait, wait, don't move the guitar. Thank you. Okay. It's just because it goes fuzzy. And as you can see, it's a nice Blackguard. Is it Relic? And it's got is it relic? pickups by Spencer, the shared pickups. Swamp is it, Bash is super duper light. James, is it relict? Yes. But some of the relic is by me from gigging it. Because it's like a it was my my backup right. guitar for years. And how much did you how much are they going for? I think they've charged about two thousand pounds for them. Wow. But of course, you know, you go down there and you can pick your wood. Yeah. And you can Amazing. pick you, you can pick whatever you want. I've also got talking to telecasters with Big Bs. This is sort of the spare for the gigs. I think it's got two Joe Bardens in it. Two Joe Bardens. So, 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 what is this model? Who, who made this one? This, this is the JV Squire. It's a JV Squire. What year? Eight, it's an eighty-two. An eighty-two. Amazing. As you can see. Right. Can I? Can, that's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, um, George Harrison played a JV Stratocaster. He did. You know. Can I just? And there's say, a great. There's a great British, well, not British, Welsh guitar player, Mickey G. Mickey G, yeah. And I've he played all the Shakers Stevens records, and he played the JV Squire too. Hold that thought. By the way, this is Karina. This is no Karina. way, is it? Yeah, this is Karina. This is a beautiful sounding instrument. It's Karina. So let's talk about Shaking Stevens. Yeah. Whoa, whoa, Julie. I'm not going to try and sing any. <laughs> <laughs> La no, not last Christmas. Um, what, What's the Christmas song he did? Um. I don't know, but it's like... 
He's great though. I love Steve, Shaking Stevens. You drive me crazy, Green you Joe. You drive me it? crazy. Yeah, I mean Shaking Stevens. He was like the kind of um, Elvis, Cliff Richard of the eighties, wasn't he? Yeah, seventies. But he, for years, he was in a band called the Sunsets and doing like rockabilly stuff for donkey's years before he made it big. Like, yeah, I mean, if anyone, I mean. How can you not like Shaking Stevens? It was a bit cheesy, but it was amazing at the same time. But the guitar solo was incredible. Yeah, the guitar solos were, you know, I th I don't think the, that guy gets enough credit. And he's good. Um, he's good. You know, I like Shaking Stevens. Good songs. You know, Green yeah. Door. Green Door. Yeah. He got in the charts. Look, I mean, you, know, you got to hand it to Shaking Stevens. He got in the charts in the eighties with fifties kind of rockabilly. Music. I agree. So anyone that can do that, you know, you got to take your hat off to them. Um, this is my um, blackguard. It's in a state of disrepair. I was going to ask you a question. So what I'm going to do is change this plate. This is a goto plate, right? And uh, some saddles. So any ideas? What should I do? I think you should have um, just just with, with do you know what I'm going to do? Only uh, see them saddles. Yeah. What are they? I don't know, <laughs> Mister Professor. I don't know. But you they... just play them, James. You don't talk about you know. Well, you know, I mean... You just play it. I, I, I just like playing them. <laughs> yeah. But actually... Yeah, like that. Maybe I, I, I have brass. I need brass on here. I need some brass. Red, Red Volcar was telling me, right, that he yeah. thinks the Telecaster pickups... See, the pickup goes that way. Like yeah. that. Goes yeah. up like that yeah. way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He thinks it should be the other way around. So that's on the high mm -hmm. strings. He might he, be right, you know. No, mm -hmm. well, he... I, his, his feeling was it, you, 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 you get more more umph on, on, on the high strings and more twang on, on, on the low strings. The trouble is, though, it's that, this is the telly sound, so you, you can't really mess with it, even if it is wrong. Yeah, but he has got you a know. point, I think. He's um, got a point. Oh, he's definitely got a point. But, you know, this is my black guard. This, this is a 3,000 quid instrument. This, when this is working up and running, there's nothing that can beat a black guard telly. It is just... The ultimate, don't you agree? I do, and I would, and I would like to own a real one one day. And and why, 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 why is the black guard so good? Why? Well, I mean, it's just like it, it's just our thing, isn't it? Danny Garten and Roy Buchanan, Roy Nichols, Ted Green, Ted Green, so so many Keith Richards, so so many yeah. great players. Why 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 do they play a black guard and and and, and not a custom shop or even well, a squire like Ray Kuda? Well, you know, this is um, why I made this because, you know, obviously there's a Cuda caster. So I was thinking about another guitar called a Goose caster. Right. Have you heard about the Goose caster? Yeah. Well, this is the Goose caster. So instead of making my Cuda caster out of a strat like everybody and his auntie is currently doing, I thought I'm going to. Sorry, <laughs> like this. Exactly, yeah. So instead of doing one of them, which is a fine looking instrument, by the way, I thought I'd get a Blackguard. Oh, obviously, I've changed it to blue, but yeah, I make a, a Cuda caster into a Goose caster, which is a, basically essentially a Telecaster version of it. And I've got to say, because this is like the classic 41.5 millimeter neck width, it's amazing. It's incredible for slide. It's just, you know, the slide tones are... And you can play it okay you don't have the width because i know that um Rikuda's guitar is probably 43 millimeters i'm guessing right. and this is 41.5 so but but you have the advantage of you can get your thumb over there it sounds like Kuda to me. yeah so i just really like it you know i like i like you know the black guard as a slide guitar i think it's just fantastic you know and there's so many you know there's such a versatile well, telecaster in in general, is you know, because do you ever go out with your strat? Well, I did for years, but I thought of someday well, before the uh, pandemic. I used to think, mm, I'll, I think I'll take a strat today, and then it comes to the gig, and I don't, I just, I like ch sort of chicken out, and I and I just take a Telecaster. Right, yeah, because the, the telly is a king, isn't it? I I always said to myself, I said when I get old. Uh, well, I mean, I'm in my mid forties now, but when I get old. I'm just going to play tellies. You know, that's really like the kind of grown up. You're on your rocking chair on the veranda and, and it's a telecaster that you're going to play, isn't it? Because you can literally just plug this into an amplifier. You know, you can plug this 
into and it does the trick. a tweed amp. Yeah, with one cable, and that's it. Let's talk about effects. What are you taking to effects? Sorry. Well, I, let's talk about effects. What are you taking to a gig in terms of effects? A JHS Milkman. What? The, what is that? JHS is is uh, there is a I think well I, I think I know, I know what J, I know what oh. JHS is, but what's a Milkman? It's a it's a two pedals in one, and it's a clean boost, right? And a slap back echo. Oh, really? Which is all I need. So you don't actually use an overdrive pedal; you just use a boost. Sometimes I take a Timmy, you know, the Paul Cochran yeah, Timmy pedal. Really, really good pedal, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and a and a Boss tuner. Um, and that's the, it. The amp, the amp has got tremolo. If I want tremolo, and I don't use reverb, and that's you it. Don't you? You don't use reverb. No, I'll I'll, I'll show you my pedal board now. Hang on a sec. Okay. It's just your. This, this is the pedal board. Look at that. Okay, guys, check this out. You guys with big, huge pedal boards, let this be a lesson. <laughs> this guy here, James, does 300 gigs a year with just that pedal board. I hope. You know, I, he, I'm over he the, proves, I'm over the, he proves that you don't need a lot of pedals. Can you <laughs> see that? Guys. Look at that. And that's it. And, that's, and some, some days I think that's too much. Yeah, that's, that's the way to do it. And you're, you're, you know, this is great that young fellas are doing, you know, are going, you know, you'd think it would be the opposite, where the, the older chaps would be using less pedals and the young guys would be using, you know, all this computer stuff, whereas James... They're all on campus, man, the kids. <laughs> <laughs> the, kid, the youth for the day, they're all on campus. Kemplers, yeah. Well, yeah, what do you think about Kemplers? What's your view well, on Kemplers? I use one on I use one on my EP just to do some overdubs. Right. And I think they have their place and... But why would you want a Vox AC? For, I mean, this is quite. I don't. I don't want to offend anybody, but I know. But why? Why would you want a? Why have a Vox AC thirty preset and you can have a Vox AC thirty? Yeah, because I mean, you think about it. Well, I, I guess the argument is you have a Kempler, it has a shed load of effects, but you still need a cabinet with it, don't you? Unless you're going to plug it into a PA. And if you're going to yeah. take a cabinet with you, then you've got a cabinet and a Kempler. It starts to get pretty big. You might as well just take a Fender combo with you. I don't understand that. Well, mm. if, if if someone said to me, right, you know, you either use a Kemper or, or you can't play, I'd have to retire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll be with you, yeah. I mean, my, my response to this whole, you know, small kind of rig thing was the projector amps that I use, which yeah. is, you can see one right there, but in that thing there. Yeah, and and so they're small little things. They're ten watts, and you can actually you can put so one in. An, yeah, you can put it in an ammo can, which I have. I have a spare ammo can that I sometimes put it in, and then I've got a tiny, tiny rig, which is smaller than a Kempler. So I've got a real tube amplifier, point to point, fifty hand wide, and it's smaller than a Kempler. So the excuse of oh, I take a Kempler because it's small. I don't believe. I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that. Well, I not. I tend to take a, a deluxe reverb. Great amp. And you got this tattered old Vox AC thirty. What's the story with that? Well, it belonged to a there's a there's a there's a, there's a real great Cardiff guitar player called Pete Matheson, and he played with lots mm -hmm. of people, Ray Davis, etc. And he's a wonderful blues player. Yeah. And um, he was selling it. I don't know why. And um, I saw it, and I, and I thought I, I I have to have it, so I bought it off him. And mm -hmm. the first gig I done with it was a was a was a was a gig in Neath. And Neef, you know. Pardon? It's James? a place that's old. What's that called? Where, where Neath, did you? N Neath. N E A T H. Neef. Is that in Wales? Uh, in Wales. Right. And the board came up to me and went, "All right, but you look at that box of a skip." <laughs> and it does. That, it, looks, it, looks, I, it looks awful, but never, don't change it, please, because it. No, it, I'm not going to. I think I, I and but it sounds amazing. But it's just it's just too loud. It's too loud for a pub gig. Yeah. It's. Too loud for a stage gig because because obviously they're gonna they, they're gonna mic it up. Yeah. So yeah. for me, the ultimate amp is a deluxe reverb, which is like is that twenty two watts of deluxe, twenty watts of like that. Yeah, twenty two watts. Yeah. And it's perfect, I think. It's is that an original? Is that an original? No, it's a it, it's just a bog standard. Now I I got I don't really I love vintage guitars. Yeah. But I'm not really an amp guy. Right, right. You just, you know, this is the thing with, you know, this is the thing with my amps. I mean, I have essentially four amplifiers, two Dumble style things and two projectors. And, and I'm not really bother, 
bothered about owning old stuff. I mean, old stuff is great, but then you, you, you're going to have to repair it and keep it maintained. I mean, it is good. It is good, but... It is good. It's great, but... Yeah, you got to... I think if you're gigging a lot, you've got, yeah. to be, you've got to be able to turn up at a concert and be able to plug into what's ever there, even the PA, because oh, sometimes well, well, it's going to happen. Sometimes it's going to happen. Well, I mean, I, I've done gigs with my amp have gone pop and I've had to go in the PA all night. I mean, it's not pleasant, but it, yeah. does, it, it does the job, doesn't it? Yeah, I if, if you rely, you. Yeah, if you rely on effects and, and um, amps and all this stuff to get your sound, then one day you're going to come a cropper, you know? But, you know, it's like in the house, I only use a champ. I got a 70 silver face champ. Mm -hmm. And every Fantastic. video I do on the channel... What I when I played a bit for you now, by uh, it's all this champ, and that's one of my favourites. Mm -hmm. It's the bog standard silver face champ. Yeah, well, they recorded Lalo on that, didn't they? On one of them. Well, I tell you what, Lalo's I couldn't one. believe how expensive they've gone. I give like two hundred quid for mine, and now they're like five, six hundred pounds. I just can't yeah. believe it. Oh, it's, everything's gone up. I mean, that Selma, you had this old Selma amp, didn't you? Yeah. Which I wanted to take off you, but somebody else got there first. Yes. So okay, again, that, mm -hmm. great amp, but I was frightened of it because it used to make funny noises, you know. Yeah, that's the thing, James. Okay, so let's let's just. Oh, I just wanted to speak a little bit about you. So you last year, if if this is okay to talk, we we and we can take this out of the video, if if you're not happy with this. Um, yeah. Last year you won the um, the Blues Award, didn't you? The Brett. I did. The yeah, best, the, uh, what was it called? The best. No, the Emerging Artist of the Year. The emerge and you're up for the same award again, or what? what what's this no, award? this year it is um, the best use of uh, digital media in, you know, in lockdown sort of thing. Because I started the channel, yeah. didn't I? In you did, yeah, you did indeed. March last year, and now it's February this year, and it's got it's doing okay, you know. So how many subscribers have you got now? Sixteen thousand. Oh wow, that's good gracious me, that's a lot, isn't it? And um. And and this caused a little bit of controversy, didn't it? Was it there a did, bit of controversy? Yeah. Don't know yeah, if you want to go into that a little bit. <laughs> well, I don't really know. <laughs> okay. Because I'm frightened what I might say. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you ruffled a few fez feathers, but I, I think um, I know, did. You, got, you got my vote. You got my vote anyway. And um, but, I think you've oh. you've done really well with the social media thing and uh, you, you work tire tirelessly with it, you know? Well, it keeps me sane. It keeps you sane, but you're, you've also, I mean, you know, some of your videos, they've got like 100 and over 100,000 views, you know. Some yeah, of some of them are. And some of them have got 20. Some of them have got 20 views, some of them have got 100,000. Just and, the way it goes. And what, what is your kind of, what is your plan with the, how, how, what is your kind of plan with the, the YouTube? How do you, you well. Know, what is it that you're trying to do with it? What's your what's well, the whole point? The the original plan was I was going to do YouTube for 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 three months because right. I put like classic rockabilly rock and roll and country guitar solos. They are like yeah. my twenty thirty second clips. I do guitar yeah. reviews, amp reviews, pedal reviews, yeah. and I do videos about vinyl LPs. It's all it's all roots music based, rock and roll, blues, country, western swing, rockabilly, a little bit of jazz, blues. Yeah. You know? Right, right, yeah. And I was going to do this for three months. Mm -hmm. And then the pandemic was going to be over, right? Yeah. And then I was going to go back doing five, six gigs a week, and then I would post the odd video now and again. But of yeah. course, we didn't plan out like that. So you just continued relentlessly. Well, no, because we haven't come, gone back to gigging. So what I think I'm going to do? <laughs> no, no, but I love this. I love the fact that uh, nobody works harder. I mean, you, you every day there's a new video. Every day. Oh, I, 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 yeah. well, I, I try and post every day, you know, yeah. e even if it's just a. A, a 30 second clip of a crazy cavern guitar solo you know there's something on there there's something new every day and, and, and another question is sometimes when you're playing these guitar solos are they all just improvisation on that kind of theme or are they actually note for note or is it a bit of both it's, it's sort of a it's a little bit of both i mean mm -hmm. I'd say it's eighty percent note for note, then it's twenty percent. I might add in some of the like, and I should you shouldn't do it, maybe. Excuse me. So I've been told by people it's wrong, but it's only a bit of fun. And right. I mean, a, a lot of the artists who I've done stuff of have contacted me and said I must have enjoyed it. And 
I even done. I tell. I did. I did one. I'm a big fan of a, of a guy called Ronnie Dawson. Ronnie and Dawson. I, I, and I done Who's a Ronnie you? Dawson one, and he's passed away. Ronnie, I'm like, but um, right. his guitar player put a comment on. I think you played that solo better than me, which I thought was quite funny. Oh yeah. So yeah. Well, you know, there's. It's always nice to connect with you know sort of um, you know well-known oh. players via the YouTube thing. And and who are your who are your sort of favorite channels? Who are your say three favorite YouTubers guitar wise? This is quite hard now. This is come on, be bold. Free don't, hold, don't hold back. <laughs> come on, and that Jay. doesn't include yours, right? <laughs> Well, no, no, that's you know. I'm not going to say yours because that that that, okay, that, that, enough, that that'd be too cliche. That would, <laughs> you know, I won't hold it against you. Right, let, let, let me think what I like now. I quite like Trogby's guitar show. Okay, yeah, I've seen a couple of them. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's quite an interesting guy, and I mean, mm-hmm. I don't watch his stuff for the playing. Right, does I he just play? Like how he, how does he play? Does he play or just talk? He, 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 he plays a bit, but I like the, the side of it when he's taking stuff apart, you know, and, right, okay. you know, really getting into the stuff. So yeah. I like him. I, I quite like uh, Tom Bukovac. He's great, yeah. He's, he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's a real, really, real deal. I, he's a real deal, yeah. Yeah, I really like Tom Bukovac's stuff. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, um, I, I tried to, I mean, there's, there's so many in there. Yeah. Help me out, you. What, well, I don't. I don't really I watch. watch I, I don't watch a lot of. Oh, that's why I'm asking people because I don't really watch that many guitar YouTubers. I watch the Rig Rundowns. I watch Tim Lurch. Oh, I love the Rig Rundowns. I watch Tim Lurch and I watch um, Tony McKenzie and putting guitars together, and that's about it. Well, I'm I'm going for Trogby's guitar show, Tom Bugerback, and I do like Norman's Rig Guitar Channel. That's. I love it when um, Sylvester Stallone's brother goes in. I um, me. He, no, He's he, hilarious. You remind me of him. Oh really? I don't oh, know why. You. I did. You just do. Oh, thank you. I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah. Was, Is it not uh, an insult? No, no, no. It's 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 all it's all good. Um, you know, if I wish I had Sylvester Stallone as my brother, you know. Um, but um, yeah. So no, it's been great hanging out with you, um, James. Appreciate and, it. Uh, you know, good luck with this um this Blues Award. Ah. Oh. I think I think you deserve it because you've um you've been uh, really posting all over the shop. On your social media, I make a bad smell. I don't go away. No, no, it's no, it's music. <laughs> People need music, and it, and it's really good to see somebody in their twenties doing this kind of style of music. You know, it's good that it's still alive and it's not dead. You know, with the oh, it is. It's popular. It's, 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 there's a big old scene. You know. Yeah. No. No. It's it's fantastic. So thanks for this hanging out. I'm not sure how this this video's gone, but hopefully people will like it. We've talked a little bit. I hope bit. so. Yeah, we've talked about some telecasters, and and I don't think there's anything more we can talk about really. No. Than we have, and um, and I just want to say, can you say goodbye in Welsh to us? No. <laughs> can you say hello in Welsh? Bona da. Ah, okay. How do I how do I say that? Bona da. Bona da. That's what hello or goodbye. Hello. Hello, Bora. You don't know how to say goodbye in Welsh. I can't remember. You put me on the spot. Dear God, James. I, I'm not fluent. <laughs> oh, well, you know. It, I what, can do, say, Shamai, Shamai, suck my tea, as how are you? And, and does your does your grandmother, does she speak Welsh? No, nobody in my family does. So who does speak Welsh then? Is it just some people in certain areas? Well, it's it, it's more, of, I mean, it, it, it's taught in schools compulsory in Wales. Really? Oh, yeah, you have to go to welsh so what happened to you you forgot it all no i was in the uh i i, I don't know what to say that <laughs> but, but, uh, we're finding it all out now james we're finding we're finding all about <laughs> no, i was in the special welsh class <laughs> for the ones who didn't want to do it <laughs> just play guitar all day long yeah yeah too busy Pick on the guitar guitars, play guitars look at guitars buy guitars <laughs> Because you posted, I mean, this is the thing, you're 28 years old. 28 years old, yeah? I am, I'm old now. No, no, but you've got this incredible guitar collection. You've got these, like, vintage guitars, you know? I am, I'm very lucky, I know. Yeah, 
and and I know you. Ha- I know you said that you've you know you you were lucky with good deals and stuff and but good it's deals just, buying selling yeah, swapping. It's, it's so cool that you've got these you know beautiful instruments and I think that you should have them because you do how many gigs a year do you normally do? Oh, 250, 270 I used to do. Pre- yeah, so who pre-buyers. you know, there's no one better owning these guitars than as you are doing two hundred seventy oh, gigs a year. You know, yeah, I think it's it's right that a young fella. In their twenties, should have the access to these vintage instruments. Who's out there playing? I think it's. But I might. Stupid, I might know, sell a pile. Yeah. And uh, buy the Blackguard. Oh really? That's a, want... but I, I've, I've got to try a few first. I've got to, you know. Mm-hmm. What, what do you think about that guy in Spain that's making them? Na- oh, Nacho's incredible. Nacho. Do you think they're good? Incredible, yeah. I mean, he did look, the book, didn't he? He did that great Telecaster book. I've got the book, yeah. So, um, um, yeah, Julian Langer, uh, the young jazz guitar player, he's he's got one of them, hasn't he? I don't know, but yeah. to me, like, Red Volkart is one of my all-time heroes. And that man knows Telecasters, you know, he's owned them all. You interviewed him, didn't you? He did a little thing on the channel, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and what I'm saying is, if Red thinks they're good with his experience of Telecasters, they're good, you know. Yeah. Yeah. That's I mean, what that, I think. That's what I like about you is you you you're the telly man. You are the telecaster man. You know. That's yeah, but I, I don't even know the radiuses of them. <laughs> but you know, you, you live in the telecaster world. It's fantastic. It's good to see you know. And well, uh, I, I've got thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, I've got six, five or six. So you, you definitely. But you know, know. Did, did Picasso have one color paint? <laughs> <laughs> did Picasso ever make any money? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think he did. Well, <laughs> he only sold one painting, and that was to his brother. Never. <laughs> yeah, he only sold one painting, apparently. It's the Is same that... with me and my LPs. I only sold one. That was to my man. <laughs> no, you sold loads. Don't don't lie about that. I know you sold loads. So um, yeah, let, let's just end this. Let's end this on your opinion. Any other young artists in Great Britain that we should know about that you sort of come across? No, this is stuff like this is hard because I don't worry I'm gonna miss miss people out, you know. Yeah. But don't definitely worry. Connor Sell, if you've been on your channel. Mm. You know, he's, Connor he's, is a real he's a great guitar player. He's great a stu- player. F- for that Les Paul mm. being on, you know, he's a student. He's kinda of like you. You you with the tellies and your rockabilly. He's a student of his art, he is, you know. He's, yeah, you know, and Connor with the Les Paul and the, the Clapton blues breaker thing. Yes, yeah, I like it how you both you're both, you know, you're just doing that one thing. It's it's good. You know. there, there, there's a friend of mine. He's, he's from he's from Cornwall. He is, but he lives in Germany. His name is Brandon Ashington, and he plays right. in a rock really band called Rampage, and he's great singer okay. as well. What a voice he got, and great right. great guitar player. Yeah. Okay. Um, you put me on the spot now. Who else do you like? Any young any young young fellas or women that you think are worth checking well, out? Well, Brandon Connor. Um, I, I, I can't think you know. Uh, what, what, what about you? No, no, no. What this you? is well. I'm not in touch with you if you are because um. Well, I'm situation. not either. It's it's uh, <laughs> it's 1957 in this house every day. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, I, my my my. You know, I listen to like Arabic music and. Yeah, um, Cuban music. I don't listen to. African, I know it's terrible, yeah. but I don't listen to much modern stuff. Right. Really, you know, I mean, my all-time probably favorite album came out in 1955, and yeah, and I mean, I've got thousands of albums, right? Yeah, I mean, no, there, there, there's always some. There's always some great young younger musicians. Oh, there's some. There's some amazing yeah. players. Yeah. I mean, yeah. there's a there's a guy in Cardiff. I don't know if he's in a band called Ruben Kingman. He's a great guitar player. Right. Right. Um, but I don't know if he's in a band, like. But there's so so many of them. I know we, we've got a friend. I just want to just before we go, we've got a friend in common called Joe Cushley, haven't we? Oh, Joe is the uh, PR master. Yeah, he's. I mean, I knew him when he was a radio presenter, and and he compiled this CD called "Birth of the New Blues." I've got that. Really well, my my first band was called New Blues, <laughs> so ah. and he um. He uh, interviewed us and helped us and encouraged us way back. He'd be and very helpful to me too. Yeah, he's, he's a great guy, Joe, Joe Cushley. Cushley, um, Cushley, yeah. Yeah, he's, you know, he's he, he does PR now. He's a publicist, but he um, he's always involved in the scene, bringing. You know, I think I did a gig once with uh, one of the um, 
Dickinson Brothers, Luther Dickinson. Or oh, whatever. okay. Um, I can't there. remember his name. Yeah, from North Mississippi All Stars. Yeah. And he knows all those guys, and uh, he puts together compilations. He's, and he's also got, he's got my eighteen foot pirate. I've you know the, the pirates of band. Who I speak. I, I was talking about earlier. Yeah. I've got. I bought this stage backdrop. I know that. That's crazy. I, I don't crazy. know why I bought it. I don't know, but I don't You're crazy it. in a good way. But Joe Cusley has got my 18-foot Pirates backdrop in his attic. No, no. One, one day, when you're a millionaire from all these albums you're going to sell, you'll have a big music room and you'll be able to put that, you know... Well, I told my mother I'm going to drape it over the house. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, let's let's wrap, wrap this up, James. It's been really cool hanging with you Appreciate and finding it. it a little bit. Because I've wanted to find out a bit more about you. I've been really digging your guitar style, your amazing guitar player. Red Hot Guitar it. Picker. That's like the, the, the greatest accolade I can give any fellow guitarist. Is I'm going to put red, it on my podcast. Red Hot Guitar Picker. Appreciate it. Okay. God bless. See you soon. Ta-da. All the best. Bye. Okay, so that's... Let me just, uh, ah.